back. This is WINQAM Brattleboro and you're listening to Green Mountain Mornings. I'm your host Olga Peters, nine minutes past the top of the hour and welcome via telephone Chris Mays from The Reformer. Hello Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, pitch hitting. Of course we're trying to get some more of your colleagues on the show but in the meantime I am so glad you can be here today. Yeah, no, no problem. And what kind of pieces and, and stories are you working on this week, Chris? Well, there's never really a shortage of stories around here. I know some people sometimes apologize for, um, you know, canceling an interview if they have an emergency or whatnot, but it's not like I'm sitting around. I, there's always, there's always uh, stories. <laughs> Last week, I went to uh, Newbrook Elementary School for a a community um, ceremony where they revealed the solar project. Oh, right. Which I didn't. Re- yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't realize how many um, issues they they had. Just really because the project kept getting sold to uh, three three different companies and now landing on its fourth and it's um it's up and running. It's been running for a, a few months now, and and the people there are just really excited about it and happy to see their power bills go down and use it as a chance to educate the children on renewable energy. And uh, how long was this project in the works if it kept getting sold? It was actually in the works since 2014. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, I drove That's- past the school the other day and was pretty impressed by the size of the solar array. Yeah. You know what? Until I, I visited last week, I, I, I never really noticed it, but now I've, I've driven past a couple of times and I just, I, now I see it and I'm, I'm like, Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> what other pieces are on your desk right now? Um, well, we should have a story running soon about the rescue pump pumper uh, mm-hmm. truck that the um, Brattleboro town representatives, um, town meeting representatives um, approved last year. And so that, that was um, ordered and a few of the firefighters, including the fire chief went to Florida, went to the factory. He said they spent up to 10 hours each day up um, in the factory, making sure everything was what they wanted. They ordered these trucks to, uh, to meet their their specifications, and he said there there were a few issues with the paint and and um, and some other minor details. Um, those were fixed. Then the 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 truck was it went to, it um, was driven to Massachusetts, Walpole, Massachusetts, and they're going to do some final inspections and tests. And uh, the chief hopes to have it in town by July first. That would be uh, quite the achievement. It just, it as you're talking, it, it it blows my mind how much work goes into these fire apparatuses or this fire equipment. It, it is not as simple as walking onto the lot and saying, oh, I like the color of that one. That's a nice cherry red. It, it's, it, it, it is a different process, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're right. <laughs> uh, I had Bukasi on the show uh, a few weeks ago now, and he was talking about not the pumper truck, but uh, a, the fire truck that they approved at the most recent representative town meeting. And just talking about how he has to consider, yeah, we have a lot of wood structures in this town, but then on Main Street, we have, you know, the side of the street that's not very accessible because it's up against the train tracks. And we have, you know, and just all the the things he has to think about when he's considering the layout of this town and the different needs he has to serve when responding to a fire. Yeah. I I do not envy him in, in that regard. (laughs) (laughs) This is true. 
And uh, any other uh, things you're kind of keeping an eye on right now? I, yes, I've been, I've been talking with some people around Dover about this um, cannabis and music festival and the organizer, um, Sandy McDougal, he owns Layla's Riverside Lodge on Route 100. Mm-hmm. And he's going forward with this festival and he had to put some of his own funds into, into the festival. He was hoping to get some 1% local option tax money that's used for events and, and other grants to help economic development in town. Mm-hmm. And uh, the select board denied him. It came in um, later than a um, 180-day notice. So that was one reason. They were also concerned about the optics of the festival. Hmm. They were worried because they're still ga- they were still gauging um, the public feedback with their um, you know how they feel about marijuana. Right. Two Wilmington residents are, are hoping to uh, open a dispensary in town, and the police chief he wants to have an ordinance banning medical marijuana dispensaries and and uh, and and recreational sales. Mm-hmm. So the select board, before doing that, the select board wanted to see how the town feels, and and they didn't want to approve um, funding for a project where they said, we don't know how the town feels on this. We don't know if we want to support something with the word cannabis in its title. Hmm. We are back with Green Mountain Mornings here on WINQAM Brattleboro. I am your host, Olga Peters, 21 minutes past the top of the hour. And welcome back, Chris Mays from The Reformer. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. And I need to remind listeners that this segment of Green Mountain Mornings is being filmed by BCTV. It will be broadcast online later. And rebroadcast of Green Mountain Mornings tonight is sponsored by Brattleboro Savings and Loan. So, Chris, tell me, have you had a chance to get the results of the town survey on medical versus recreational marijuana from the town of Dover? Yep, they were released yesterday mm-hmm. by the town clerk's office. And um, so there there were 144 surveys altogether, and they broke them down into voters mm-hmm. and um Okay, so there were voters who re- who returned 144 surveys and property owners who returned 34 surveys. Hmm. The select board wanted to get a feeling of how people who who own property in town feel, as well as the voters. Because one thing Dover is uh, kind of questioning is, do they want to create an ordinance that would re- kind of regulate, for lack of a better term, medical and recreational marijuana in the town, correct? Actually, it wouldn't be regulate, but prohibit. Prohibit. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, And so what are you gleaning from these results so far? So voters um, didn't want medical or recreational sales. They said 86 said no to medical, and 57 said yes to medical, 97 said yes to recreational, and 47 said yes. I mean, 97 said no to recreational, and 47 said yes to recreational. Hmm. Okay. So it's a large share of voters who, who do not want either either one of those. And what's... What about the property owners? Did you happen to see those results? Yeah. Um, so 18 of them, so they said yes to medical, but no to recreational. 18 said yes to medical, while 11 said no um, to medical. And then 18 said no to recreational, and 13 said yes. Ah, uh, so... Everyone seems pretty in alignment when it comes to recreational marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and the turnout was good. Actually, the town clerk, Andy McLean, he, he was, um, he said it was, it was a lot more people participating than he expected. He, he, he said it was uh, a town meeting, um, attendance number. Oh wow! You know, and he he's surprised because you don't. He says you don't normally see that when you're talking about one issue. Mm-hmm. 
So what's the next step now that the survey results have come in? So, so the town clerk says he's not going to recommend anything. He's not going to tell them, yeah, you should do this ordinance or you shouldn't. Based mm-hmm. on the survey, he's going to present the numbers to the select board and, and the select board members will decide what to do next. Okay. And what does this mean, do you think, for the folks who wanted to open a medical marijuana dispensary in Dover? Well, I think it, it certainly dimmed their hopes. I, I would, I would feel safe in saying. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I think I've asked you this before, and I'm sorry, I just don't remember the answer. The folks who are looking to open the dispensary in Dover are actually from Wilmington. Is there a reason why they didn't open it in Wilmington? Um, I'm I'm not sure. I think they just felt. Um, you know what? I, I'm I'm not totally sure, but I think there's. There's, um, you know, there might be more space to rent in Dover than Wilmington at the moment, or mm. I'm not sure if they have a location in mind. Right now in Wilmington, I think it's hard to find a place to rent. Oh, wow. Um, I think their people are looking to sell buildings. Uh, rather than rent them. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, but that's a conundrum. You know, I'm, I'm not totally sure on that. I, I I know they said that the Deerfield Valley has a lot of um, residents who hold marijuana medical marijuana cards. Mm-hmm. So they felt like opening in a location between Brattleboro and Bennington would would be good, especially for people driving in the winter. Yes. Yes, as someone who had a family member on medical marijuana from the Deerfield Valley, boy, that uh, trip into Brattleboro to get uh, medicine was kind of harrowing at times over the winter. Yeah. Especially when you're not feeling well. And you have to take Route 9. (laughs) Ah, the infamous Route 9. The scary thing about Route 9 is I think that was probably the best road they could build which tells you a lot about the terrain they were going through. Yeah, yeah, for sure. (laughs) And uh, we're going to talk after the break about the gathering place opening in Dover. But is there any other Dover town business that you want to touch on before we go to break? Um, No, no. Kind of quiet over there in Dover. Yeah, it's it's pretty much um, right now. It's it's um, there's a lot going on with 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 marijuana because of the survey, because mm-hmm. of the potential ordinance, and and this festival scheduled for July first when um, the state allows marijuana to be um, you know possessed in in certain amounts mm-hmm. and and consumed by adults. This is Green Mountain Mornings, and you are listening on WINQAM Brattleboro. I'm your host, Olga Peters, 36 minutes past the top of the hour. Welcome, Chris Mays from The Reformer. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. We're uh, joined by my my little Yorkie, Lennon, right now. (laughs) Hello, Lennon. Oh, he can't he can't sing on command. Can't bark. She's sleeping on my lap. Oh, (laughs) Lennon has the right idea. It's kind of that low key, sleepy sort of day. Uh, well, yeah, she doesn't really get going till ten. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she's got a good life. <laughs> she does. <laughs> Talking about uh, staying on the topic of Dover. Both you and I attended the gathering places ribbon cutting ceremony for the uh, their satellite center in West Dover. What what did you think about that? We've been kind of covering this for a while and and now it's here and it's happening. Yeah, it was a that it was a it was a big moment for the gathering place. They've been talking about this project for for years now. Um, you know, it started as as an idea so um, seniors and and um, some and disabled um, residents would would wouldn't have to trek to Brattleboro to mm-hmm. get day services offered in Brattleboro. And um, the first 
at first they they thought they were going to be sighted at the old high school in Wilmington. Oh, right. And then they they decided to buy the old First Walk Chinese restaurant on Route 100 in Dover, and it's they've they've done a lot of reno- renovations in there. I was there. I want to say maybe a month or two ago mm-hmm. when um, Mary Fredette was stepping down as executive director and, and everything was coming along, um, but not everything was finished yet. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, Maggie Lewis, the new executive director, took me for a tour and it, it's just it's just um, wonderful what they're doing in there. Yeah, it's it's a good space and it's nice. I think they chose a nice site in that plenty of parking. And the space yeah. itself, it's all one level, and it it looks nice. I was talking to the chair of the board of directors yesterday at the event, and he was saying that they did run into some hiccups in the sense that, you know, the basement had water issues that, that they needed to deal with. Uh, and I guess the fire suppression system for the entire complex is – in their building, so they had to do some kind of safety management kind of things around that fire suppression system. And yeah, I, I knew the basement had been one of their bigger challenges. Yeah, water and was it mold as well or just water? Um, I think it was a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I am excited. I talked to Karen uh, Hine, who is uh, a neighbor, and her husband is dealing with Alzheimer's. And he's been going to um, the gathering place, I think she said since, oh, quite a few years now. I, I don't dare guess, at 2015, 2016. And she was saying how happy she is that he no longer has to travel about an hour that now it's, it's a much shorter drive for him and uh, winters will be better too as well. Yeah. What were some of the other moments from the day that stood out for you at the ribbon cutting? Well, they dedicated the building to Mary for death, the former executive director. Mm Mm-hmm. And she was really crucial in getting in getting this done. She was she really led the charge over the last few years. Um, she was also she also had had a lot of support with with some of the the residents here in the Deerfield Valley. One of them being the Wilmington Town for Nurse Jen, Jennifer Fitzgerald. Yes. And I don't think we can under let's see under talk about underestimate the importance of what an adult day will mean for the the Deerfield Valley because transportation, even though they have the help of the mover, it's, it's still a a, a big deal, especially if you have a family member who might be working in the Deerfield Valley, but you have to somehow get your elder family member to Brattleboro. It can be a logistical issue. Yeah, and and you know, yesterday seeing the place filled with with some of the participants and and the community, I, I got a real sense of 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 what it will be like. I, I've been to the Brattleboro one a few times, and it's just amazing. You know, these these the the participants get to you know get out and socialize, communicate, connect with with other people, and they their minds are stimulated with activities and games. And then there's also the the care they get. You know, there's there's physical therapy. There's nurses. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's just a great facility. Well, wish them all the luck. And for anyone who is considering taking advantage of the gathering places services, whether either for an elder or a disabled adult, they still have space at the uh, satellite site in Dover, so you can still enroll there and you just go to the gathering places website for more information. Will you be attending the Brattleboro select board meeting tonight, Chris? Oh yeah. (laughs) Silly question, Olga. 
Any? Yeah, I- I'm. I'm not sure how long it's going to last. There's there are a few big big items um, that are under consideration. Mm-hmm. Which ones are piquing your interest the most right now? Well, I guess I'd have to say the the west the wastewater treatment plant. They're talking about repairing the risk cycle water control system. Mm-hmm. That's about um, almost sixteen thousand dollars. Oh um, yeah, yeah. So so that yeah that that will be something. Um, you know that will be in the beginning of the meeting. I don't anticipate it will take long unless there's some concerns. Um, then there's the Economic Development Administration Grant, which is something we've been following pretty closely at the Reform of the Culture Made Vermont Project. Mm-hmm. And so they're hoping to get about $420,000 from the EDA to help make improvements to the town's water and sewer system, basically so they'll have capacity to serve this, this big project. Right, and, and they're making dairy and non-dairy beverages at this at this facility, and that's part of what I mean. The town has said, "Hey, we're going to pitch in and help as much as we can because we can see long-term benefits." But they do have some contingencies, and funding is is one of them. Yeah, they're they're seeking four hundred and twenty thousand dollars from the grant, but. The town will have to put up, um, you know, the other half, another four hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and the and the town staff, um, they say we we're going to recoup this in in uh, fees mm-hmm. and and it's an investment in the town. You know, I forget how many jobs, but it's it's a it's a it's. It's a large number of jobs that they're, they're anticipating with this, and they they expect it will help. Um, actually, part of the contingency uh, include um, creating jobs for um, people on the lower end of the um, economic spectrum. Mm-hmm. Right, and that takes us back to the event I'll be covering tonight, and won't be at the select board, and that's the uh, Seveds kind of economic development vision for the the area and that's one of that is uh raising wages yeah and so this project falls into that now what do you think about the parking discussion schedule for considering capital improvements and the parking study items yeah it looks like tonight they're going to be talking about creating this wooden parklet on main street um, which would be for for parking for bicycle parking, hmm. and this is something that came up in the parking study, and people feel strongly about it. They want to see more more done to promote um, bike riding in town and and make it more accessible for people. And so, what remind me? What would this parklet uh, serve? Is it just a place to chain your bicycle, or is it? have other purposes? Yeah, I think, I think it will also, it's, it's supposed to be, um, a way to make the area look nicer, Mm -hmm. you know, it has a beautification component. Okay. But it will also be removed during the winter months. Ah, okay. So we'll we'll have to see. I, I'm interested to hear about this. It's it's a collaboration with the Downtown Brattleboro Alliance. Uh huh. Oh, look forward to hearing more about that. It, but it doesn't look like they're planning on resolving that whole conversation around parking meters and um, using an app or updating parking meters, that kind of thing. Um, I think I think they might bring it up because it's been discussed at the last couple of meetings. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure. Um, I haven't looked yet. But um, I'm not sure if it's it's part of the proposed schedule coming forward with from from town staff. Okay. There's also a number of grants and uh, uh, project bids that are on the agenda. Yeah, I think I'm I'm most excited to hear about the skate park design. Me too. Um, they had one, um, the first 
um, request for proposal process, uh, it kind of failed. They didn't get the bids they wanted, so they put it out again. And now it seems they have this company out of Burlington mm-hmm. who will do the design for a, about $42,000. And that's under budget, isn't it? Um, well, I'm not sure how much they budgeted for the design, but they, they have enough money on hand to do this. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're really close to, to um, closing the fundraising gap. They have a few more grants and they're doing this challenge grant. I know they're, they're really close to getting the matching grant. Um, so, so we're, we're really close to the finish line here. And I, I think, I think a lot of people are, are happy to see this project move forward now. That's right, because they're also on the agenda is to accept and appropriate a Vermont Community Foundation Spark Grant for about $3,000 for the skate park project. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, a bunch of us might have to take up skateboarding. Yeah. Just to celebrate that this Star is done. At the last meeting, um, it might have been a few meetings ago, she's the uh, select board vice chairwoman and she said you know i told my kid i was gonna i'll I'll go skateboard with you once it once it opens (laughs) bring it on bring it on and bring on lots of padding too because when you fall as an adult it hurts a little bit more (laughs) yeah that's why i stick with snowboarding i don't know so i'm not sure that snow is always less hard sometimes than concrete depending on the weather no you're you're right about that (laughs) and rescue inc they're going to potentially approve the annual contract have you heard any discussions about that do you think that will go smoothly have any concerns been raised um so far i have i haven't heard much about it Mm mm-hmm yeah, one thing they'll have to talk about is uh, Brattleboro has historically received a discount. Uh, but for many reasons, that discount no longer exists. So uh, they will be probably talking about that change. Yeah. And finally, committee appointments, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but it kind of is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, so the reason you hear Chris Chris pausing because Chris is like, I don't know about committee appointments. This is why Olga will get on her soapbox and say committee appointments are a big deal. If you are interested in town government, committee work is a really great way to get your feet wet to decide if you even like sitting through the process and uh, the democratic process and getting things done at a municipal um what should we say? A municipal pace, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, but it is, it is important. You know what, you know, in our work, we, we, we watch all the stuff, all the stuff these, these people do on committees and boards. And, and um, sometimes they really struggle to find people to fill the positions. Yeah. And it's actually where a lot of the, I mean, the town staff do a lot of great work. But they are really focused on what will kind of keep the town operating. You know, the, the fire chief is focused on the firehouse, that kind of thing. And a lot of the committees do work that kind of enhance the town. Like the arts committee or the energy committee, they're, they're getting to do projects that maybe the town staff wouldn't have time to do on their own. And yeah, and... and- you know the development review board and the school board i'm i'm often just appalled not appalled but shocked at how complex some of the stuff they have to navigate through it is it's it's dense yeah very very good point there chris well I look forward to reading all about your coverage for the select board meeting tonight. And I thank you so much, Chris, for being on today's show. 